Hello, this is Mr. Bus, and in this video, I'm going to go over pedigree charts, which are what you see here, showing the um, family relationships, uh, parents and offspring, and different generations, as well as uh, specifically looking at some non Mendelian genetics with X link traits. So sometimes they're also called sex link traits. Uh, same thing, I just say X-linked traits, and they are specifically traits that show up on the X chromosome. So as we know, uh, biological males have one X chromosome, and then they have a Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is a purely gender-determining chromosome, whereas the X chromosome, which uh, biological females have two copies of the X chromosome, they lack the Y chromosome, the X chromosome all um, also has traits on it, genes on it that have nothing to do with gender. So things like uh, determining um, whether or not you can see in color, okay? Uh, something called uh, hemophilia is passed on the X uh, chromosome. So whether or not your blood clots properly. So there's many traits that are on the X chromosome and the inheritance pattern of x linked traits is uh, a little different than it would be on a um, autosomal chromosome or chromosome for humans, one of the chromosomes numbered 1 to 22. Okay, so let's just take a look at the pedigree charts first. Uh, there's a little key here showing that uh, males, biological males are square uh, symbols, biological females are circle symbols, and whatever trait we're looking at, if the individual has that trait, it's going to be shaded. You'll sometimes see, um, you'll sometimes see uh, like half circles shaded. That would mean that that person is uh, heterozygous for the trait, meaning that they're a carrier. Now, I'm not going to use that symbol. Um, we're just going to have them be shaded if they show the trait and not shaded if they're not showing the trait. It doesn't tell you if it's a dominant or recessive trait necessarily. It just tells you that they have the trait. All right, and a mating, so this is this would be like, this would be like a generation, okay? So one generation, two generations, three generations, and so on. Uh, and if there's a line between individuals and then a line coming down, that means that those individuals had offspring. So for instance, these individuals, numbers five, six, and seven, are the children of parents one and two. And these individuals, eight and nine, are the children of individuals three and four. It doesn't mean that they're still children. I mean, for instance, these two individuals, seven and eight, are adults and had a, a child as well. It's just showing that uh, parent to offspring relationship. Okay, so uh, go ahead and try to see if you can fill in who everyone is and pause the video because I'm going to go through there right now and it's always good to challenge yourself before I go through it. So check your answers if you've done this on your own. Jane and Bill have dimples. Their daughter Clarissa does not. So dimples would be the uh, filled in circle. So where is a situation where Two people have dimples, but their daughter does not. Okay, that would be seven and eight. So seven would be Jane, and eight would be Bill, and number 10 would be Clarissa. Okay, uh, the next bullet point, Bill's dad, Mark, has dimples. Bill's mother, Patty, and sister, Grace, do not. Jane's dad, Kevin, her brother, Pete, and her sister, Emily, do not have dimples. Jane's mother, Heidi, does. So that's just kind of an example of how to look at a pedigree. But now we're going to look at real genetics traits. I mean, dimples is a genetics trait too, so, but we're going to look at something called hemophilia. So if you have hemophilia today, you would be diagnosed with that, and um, you would probably have some, I don't know a lot about this, uh, but you would have uh, some medicine to help you um, live a normal life uh, with hemophilia. Okay, but we're going to look at a family, a historic family, that lived at a time where hemophilia was more of a 
a lethal disorder because there wouldn't have been medicine for it. Okay, so if you have hemophilia, you don't really clot your blood very well, and you can um, lose a lot of blood from a smaller cut, and you can have internal bleeding, I suppose, as well. So uh, hemophilia would typically have resulted in a child that did not live through their childhood, unfortunately, a long time ago. So we're going to look at uh, a pedigree for Queen Victoria of England, actually. It's a real pedigree. Uh, it's thought that she was a carrier of hemophilia. That, that means carrier means that she didn't have hemophilia, okay? It means that she carried the trait for hemophilia because remember, females have uh, two X chromosomes, biological females. So if you carry the hemophilia trait on one of your X chromosomes, you still have one normal if you're a female uh, X chromosome to give you the um, phenotype of not having hemophilia. So for a female to have hemophilia, you'd have to have the hemophilia trait on both of your X chromosomes. Right? But if you're biological male, you only have one X chromosome. So that X chromosome either has or does not have the hemophilia trait. So if you get the hemophilia trait passed on to you on an X chromosome, you've got hemophilia. Okay, so it's very rare for a female to have hemophilia to get that combination, but it's a lot less rare. It's still a rare disorder. It's a lot less rare for a male to have the disorder. Okay. Um, and I'm, actually, I kind of skipped over this, but um, the inheritance pattern, I was reading from the first paragraph here, in that humans' excellent traits are almost exclusively found in males. It's kind of what I just went over. Yet the male always inherits the trait from the mother. Why is that? Because the mother is going to pass on an X chromosome to her daughters and sons. The male, biological male, gets, an X, gets a Y chromosome from the father. The father passes on an X chromosome, the father's going to have a daughter. Okay, so let's go take a look at the pedigree here. So all the possible genotypes are shown. XY normal male. XHY would be a hemophiliac male. And then the females have three possibilities, either normal, carrier, or hemophiliac female. So uh, notable people from the pedigree, we have individual number one is Queen Victoria and so on. Number two is Alice of Hesse, and three is Leopold and so on. So we have four generations shown here and you don't have to fill out the genotype for all of these individuals, but notice that uh, the 10 that are numbered, I'd like you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out what the genotype is. Just remember, these are the genotypes. So by each, right here, by each of the individuals, write either XY, XHY, XX, XXH, or XHXH. Go ahead and do that, pause the video. All right, now I'm gonna go through it. Hopefully you've already tried it on your own. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take care of uh, figuring out what all the males are, because they're, um, pretty straightforward. Are there any males here? There, are. number three is. Okay, so number three is shaded. So number three is X, H, Y. Hemophiliac male. Number six is just X, Y. Normal male. Number eight, normal male. Number nine, hemophiliac male. And number 10, hemophiliac male. Okay, so we're done with all the males. Taking a look at the females. Are there any that have hemophilia that have a circle that's filled in? No. So there's not any of those, okay? So how do I determine the hardest thing to figure out? You have to use a little logic for is how to figure out if a female is carrying the hemophiliac trait. Well, we know that a female is carrying the trait if she passes it on to a son. She passed on an X chromosome to one of her sons here, Leopold. Leopold got the trait. So that means that number one, Queen Victoria is a carrier because she had a son that had hemophilia. She also had sons that didn't have hemophilia. Those sons got the normal X chromosome from her, but Leopold did not. Okay, Let's see if there's any more carriers. Is number two a carrier? 
Yes. Number two had a son with hemophilia. Is number four a carrier? Yes. Again, had sons with hemophilia. Is number five a carrier? Yes. Is number seven a carrier? Yes. Okay. From whom did Leopold, number three, inherit hemophilia? From her, his mother, number one, Queen Victoria. What are the chances of Alice of Hesse, number two, being a carrier? We've determined that she is a carrier. Uh, so I'll just write 100%. Uh, because it was shown that she had a son with hemophilia. If she didn't have any children or if she didn't have any sons with hemophilia, you just would never not know. What were Leopold's chances of passing hemophilia on to his son? Trick question almost. If Leopold had a son, which he did, what are the chances that that son would have hemophilia? Well, 0% assuming assuming that Leopold's wife did not carry hemophilia. And it was a, it's a rare disorder. It's rare to be a carrier or have hemophilia. So, uh, the, but the chance of Leopold chancing, passing his hemophilia to his son is 0% chance because Leopold would pass a Y chromosome onto his son. And the Y chromosome has nothing to do with hemophilia. Show upon a square cross for Queen Victoria of England. Okay. With a normal male. So in this cross, there's a 25% chance that Queen Victoria has a, a daughter that's a carrier. There's a 25% chance that she has a daughter that's normal, not a carrier. Has 25% chance to have a son with hemophilia. And a 25% chance to have a son that does not have hemophilia. So what, do you, what are some big takeaways from this pedigree? Notice that... It's got a lot of sons, males, that have the disorder. Very few, and in fact, no females on this that have the disorder. And it can uh, skip a generation. For instance, this generation did not have hemophilia, but this one did. So uh, it doesn't always show up every generation. It can skip a generation because the female can just be a carrier and can pass, the, could pass hemophilia onto her daughters as carriers. Um, and it usually just shows up in males. Okay, let's look at another one here. Go ahead and pause the video and try to fill this one out for colorblindness. Same idea. Uh, we're just using a C on the X chromosome for the colorblindness trait. Colorblindness is, in fact, a disorder that is much more common in males because it is on the X chromosome. Okay, go ahead and check your answers. Again, you just uh, had written down the genotype by numbers one through nine. So one is normal male, two would be carrier female because two had um, sons with colorblindness. Three is a carrier. Four is actually unknown, just because she didn't have sons with colorblindness doesn't guarantee that she's got the XX. She could be XCX. We just, uh, and, and just happened to pass on that X chromosome to her sons. Um, so we don't really know, number four. Can't be sure. Number five, colorblind male. Number six, carrier female. Number nine is interesting, is a colorblind female. Number nine is interesting because uh, to have a daughter with the trait because the daughter got those, okay? And to have a son without a trait because the son got those. That's just interesting that, that could have happened and it did in that case. Um, 
those are the last of them there, and then number seven. Okay, so there's those genotypes for one through nine. Is number two a carrier of color blindness? Yes. Is number four a carrier of color blindness? Unknown. Is number one a male or female? Male, because it's a square. Is number five a child of number two? No, number five married number six or um, entered the family from another family and became part of this pedigree. Five and six had their own children, but five came from another family. And then uh, this part here is, I, you can Google this if you want to or put it on YouTube. I Am My Own Grandpa is a video and it's a song. And go ahead and try, it's just challenge yourself, read through this. It's just uh, one of those crazy, can, it, can you even map this out in a pedigree? Uh, I'll pause the video here. I'll probably start another one and see if you can